In this video you will learn how to build a scratched metal shader. For this we will be using the updated curvature in V-Ray to generate a fully procedural mask and then use a blend material to combine everything together. So in this video we will discuss on how to build this kind of nice weathered metal shader. And we have three different kind of materials which we're going to be blending together. And we're going to be using a node that I tend to use a lot recently, which is the V-Ray curvature node. And we're going to generate these kind of effects here totally procedurally. That means you don't need any UVs, you don't need to prepare any kind of textures and so on. Everything is done completely automatically during render time and can be applied to any kind of object that you have in the scene. As a side note, as usual, you can find all of the scene files for this and my other tutorials over on my Patreon together with a lot of other interesting stuff that you might find interesting. So let's first check out the three different materials that we're going to be using to generate this kind of effect. We're not going to be building those materials here from scratch because if you watched any of my other tutorials, you already know quite well how to do that. But we're going to be focusing on how we can blend these kind of materials here procedurally so that we get this nice and interesting effect. So let's start first with this kind of reddish base material. And that should just be some painted metal. You can see we have this kind of like reddish color with a little bit breakup in the glossiness and a little bit of bump applied to it. Then we have our scratch material here. And this one is some quite reflective and scratched metal parts, which only will be visible on the edges. And then also this kind of rust shader, which we're also going to be adding in some of the parts of our model like these kind of creases and so on and in order to blend these three different materials we would need to have a v-ray blend material and then we would need to have certain kind of masks to define where each of those shaders here are showing up and let's just add a new v-ray blend material but instead of piping directly these shaders into here let's first focus on how we can generate a mask and then once we're happy with our mask we can then pipe in our shaders to generate the finished result in order to preview our mask i have these two very simple v-ray light materials here prepared one is completely black and the other one is completely white and now we're going to just pipe in the black shader into the base material and then the white shader into our code one so into our first layer then we're going to apply this material to the shading dummy and now you can see that we have this kind of grayish result and that's because we're blending at the moment this black shader with this white shader at 50 percent we can put this value here to complete black for now that means now we only show our base material and then in this blend amount we can generate a composite and then use different kind of layers in here to generate our mask. Now let's first clean up this a little bit so that we have a better overview because we don't need to see those three different shaders for now. And we're only gonna focus on here, these two materials up here, and then this kind of composite where we're gonna generate our mask. Let's put a V-Ray color as the base in here. And then we can put this base color here to complete black. That means we only show this black shader for now. And then we're gonna layer different kind of elements in here in order to build up our final mask. So now I restructured the UI a little bit so that we have a bit more space here to work with, but everything is left off exactly where we were. And now, because we're working with mask, we need to make sure that whatever we feed into here would need to be clamped. So that means all the values should be between zero and one. And for that, we're just gonna add a fresh output node in here and just make sure that we put our composite here into the map and then use this one here instead as our map input. And then just make sure that this value here is clamped. So that means whatever we build up here below will be clamped in the end so that our mask will just receive values between zero and one and no values which have any not valid color values in there. Now let's go back to our composite. Now let's add our first and most important node which will be the V-Ray curvature node. And once we do this, you can see we immediately have some kind of interesting result. And there are certain kind of values that we can adjust in here. At the moment, this mode here is set to legacy mode, but there's three more modes and we're gonna check out what they are doing. 
So let's first check out some of the settings in here. Most of them are kind of self-explaining, but we have here, for example, these parts, which are not really shown correctly in our curvature map. And that's because the radius is too big for these kind of very thin elements. So we would need to choose some kind of smaller radius, for example, something like 0.4 centimeter in this case. And then you can see we have a nicer mask here on those edges. We can then define here our minimum color and our maximum color. Let's leave them between zero and one for now, but we will define a higher output gain to get more contrast and to have a more stronger mask because remember white is where our shader will be completely visible and we need to have a certain amount of contrast in order to make those shaders show up clearly in those parts. So for now let's temporarily add the output gain to 5 and then the output gamma because at the moment we have these very smooth transitions we can lower this output gamma to something 0.5 or maybe even 0.1 to have these kind of very strong edges here. And that's something that we're gonna work with for now. So as you can see at the moment, we work in this legacy mode, but there are three more modes available. In the end, we're gonna be using this both mode, but let me show you the convex mode. And this one, as the name suggests, just masks out the convex edges. And the concave mode just masks out the concave edges. And the legacy mode just masks out both of them basically, but we also have this both mode. And once we do this, we have a kind of similar effect, but now we have the two different modes, convex and concave here, mask as separate colors. So you can see we have the red color for this convex mode and the green color for this concave mode. So why is this useful in this case? Very simple, we can add different kind of shaders into the different kind of parts. For example, we can add the scratch metal in these red parts and we can add the rust in more these kind of greenish parts. And this way just use one V-Ray curvature node. So since the curvature is masked out in two different colors, it kind of screws up our mask because the mask only expects basically grayscale value. We can't really use this kind of color tones in here. And that's why we have to use a simple color correction in order to split up our mask into different channels. So the color correction we will use one, set this here to red, and then we will add another color correction and set all of those here to green. And then we can pipe our output in those two different slots in here. And now let's go back to the blend material and add two of those shaders in here and make this one here black and then remove this blend amount. And now let's use the red one here. Let's call this convex. And then let's call this one here concave. And by using this way, we will use this kind of colored output that had these red and green values. We split this up into two different maps. And now we can put those maps back into the respective blend amount values. And then we can define different kind of shaders here for this convex and concave parts of our shading dummy. So now we have all the parts that we want already masked off, but at the moment the mask itself looks very unnatural because it's too perfect, too clean, and we want to have these kind of random patterns in here. And this we're gonna work on now a little bit. So for this I prepared already a simple V-Ray bitmap that just has some scratches and I used a simple triplanar map. And now let's add a new layer and then you can see how this texture here will look like. So once I pipe this into this new layer, you can see we just have these kind of random scratches in here. And now we will set this mode to multiply. And then you can see that it already breaks up our mask here quite nicely but I still think it looks a bit too uniform and that's why I'm gonna be adding two more noises in order to randomize it even more. So for this, let's add a new layer and then let's add a simple 3ds Max noise and then put this below here. And then in this noise, let's just choose some simple values. Let's choose turbulence, for example, and then choose a size of one, levels of 10, and then we will keep this high value at one and the low value, let's put this to 0.15 to add a little bit more contrast. 
Then let's add a new layer and let's also add a new noise. We can just copy the one that we have already, put this into the top layer and then choose this noise here to be just a simple fractal noise and maybe choose a size of two. And then let's put the high values at 0.6 and the low values at 0.5. So we have these kind of bigger shapes. So now let's go back to the composite and then let's switch those two different maps also to multiply mode. And then we will use a different opacity in this case, I will use a opacity of 99. And because you can see now we have this kind of interesting result that some of the parts are being chipped away here from our noises. But uh, at the moment it's shrinking a lot. And remember that this here, the output gain is set to a value of five. That means these values are much brighter than one. And we can even make this much brighter, for example, something like 15. And you will see that this way the noise kind of acts in a way that it kind of like deforms here our mass. So you can see if I put this noise all the way to 100, then he will completely remove those parts. But let's say a value of 99.9, .9, it will kind of like eat away from this very high output gain in here. And it kind of deforms these edges, if that makes sense. So now I think we can choose an even higher output gain, for example, something like 25. And then let's go into here and then put both of those nodes to 99.9. .9. And then you can see we have this kind of very random effect here where we don't have these kind of very like even edges, but it's kind of like naturally broken up and should look quite nice and realistic. So now we have our mask defined and now we can easily switch out those two dummy shaders with our real shader. So let's move those ones here aside for now. And then let's add this painted metal as the base material. And then we will add the scratches into this first part, into the convex part. And then we will add also the rust part into these concave edges. Let's move this over a bit. And now you can see we have already the kind of effect that we have this kind of like chipped off paint here. And we have these kind of rust that's building up in those concave edges. So now we are almost finished. The only thing that we have not now is that the bump map also is affected by this kind of mask. And we can verify this by going to the normals you can see. Yeah, we have the individual bump maps of those elements here showing up. But what we would expect is that there's this kind of like edge here where this paint would be chipped off so that the paint looks like it's a little bit higher. And this is also quite easy to do. We can just add a very simple V-Ray bump material and then put our blend material into the base material of the bump material and then use our mask here, those masks, we can use the output node and then put this output mode into a V-Ray color to bump and then add this into the map slot. And then we will put this color to bump into the bump map slot. And then once we do this, we can see that if we assign this material, that now our normals would also be affected you can see once I add here this bump amount to 100 that we have now kind of a fact here building up. At the moment it's inverted so we would need to put the height to negative one. And now you can see we have these kind of like chipped off edges building up here. And this you should also see quite nicely in the finished result that you can get some highlight here on the edge. And it looks like this part is a little bit higher than the scratched metal beneath. I think now the effect is too strong. Let's just dial down this here to negative 0.3, for example. And then I think this could be here our finished effect. So we have these scratched off metal parts and then we have this rust here building up. And if we go to this blend material, you can also disable the rust, for example, if you just put this value here to zero or you can disable the scratches. If you put this to zero or you can have it both at 50%. And by this way, really 
fine tune your shader. So now you have only a little bit of this scratched metal here showing through and you can really fine tune your finished result to whatever you feel fits best to you then. Now let's put those parts here back to 100 so that we can see the finished result. And that concludes our tutorial. I hope you liked it. You can subscribe to this channel if you're interested in these kind of videos. And if you want to go the extra mile, you can check out my Patreon where you can download all of my scene files, watch whole courses and bonus videos and so on. So check out this if that's interesting for you. Otherwise, see you in the next tutorial. Take care and see you soon.